So to figure out if inverses of functions are functions, we need to use not the vertical line test, but the horizontal line test. So looking at this original function in blue, um, if you remember from before, it wouldn't be a function right now because it wouldn't pass the vertical line test, but to see if the inverse is a function, we use the horizontal one. And so since that horizontal line only crosses it one time, it's good. We could put a horizontal line anywhere, and it would only cross one time. So we would say, yes, the inverse is a function because it passes the horizontal line test. When we look at B, we use the horizontal line test and see how that one crosses the function three times. The inverse of that function would, no, not be a function. The inverse is not a function because it fails the horizontal line test. Even though the original one is a function, that's fine. The original one passes the vertical line test, but it fails the horizontal one, so the inverse is not. Now for writing equations. In order to write an equation, we need to switch the x and y values, and then we solve it for y equals. So I'm going to rewrite the first equation. First, I'm going to write y equals negative 5x plus 20. And then I'm going to switch the x and the y. I'm going to write x equals negative 5y plus 20. Now that we've done that, we just go through and solve it for y equals. So we get rid of the 20 by minusing it from both sides. We have x minus 20 equals negative 5y. We divide by negative 5, and our final answer will be y equals, when we reduce the x over negative 5, there's really a 1 in front of the x, so that'll be negative 1 fifth x. And then when we reduce negative 20 over negative 5, we get positive 4. So there's the equation for the inverse. Next, let's try b. I'm going to write y equals x squared minus 25. I'm going to switch the x and the y. And now I'm going to solve it for y. So first I'll add 25 to both sides. So we have x plus 25 equals y squared. And now to get rid of the squared on the y, we'll square root it. And our final answer is y equals the square root of x plus 25. There we go. Last one. We have y equals x minus 4 over 3. So let's switch the x and the y. That's always the first step. x equals y minus 4 over 3. My advice is to get rid of the fraction by multiplying on both sides by 3. So we have 3x equals y minus 4. Last step, I'm almost out of room, is to add 4 to both sides, and our final answer will be y equals 3x plus 4. Next, we're going to be given two functions, f and g, and we just have to decide if they are inverses, yes or no. We're going to do that by using compositions. First, we'll compose it so it's f of g of x. If that equals x, we'll keep going and compose it the other way, g of f of x. If we also get x for the answer, then we'll be able to say, yes, the functions are inverses. So let's compose it the first way, f of g of x. So into the f function, we're going to plug the g function. So this will look like f of the g function is 1 half x minus 4. 1 half x minus 4. So we're plugging that into the f function, which is 2x plus 4. So we're going to take the red part and plug it in for x. And when we plug it in, we're going to plug it in inside parentheses. So there's the 2. And now in parentheses, I'm going to put 1 half x minus 4. And then I'll recopy the plus 4. 
So we need to distribute the 2. 2 times a half is 1, so that's 1x. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 plus 4. So this comes out to be x minus 4. Since we composed it the first way and we didn't get x, we got x minus 4. That's not good enough. We're going to say no. f and g are not inverses. There's no need to keep going because we didn't get x. So we're done. Let's try b. So we'll try composing it the first way. f of g of x. So we're going to put the g function inside the f function. So for g of x, we're going to copy down 2 square root x, 2 square root x, and we're going to plug it into the f function, which is 1 fourth x squared. So in for the x, we're going to plug in that 2 square root x. It'll look weird, I know, but we'll do it. So 1 fourth times 2 square root x squared. And so, with this exponent, we need to distribute it to both of those. So it's going to be 2 squared, which is 4, and the square root of x squared cancels out, and we just have x. Last, we can multiply 1 fourth times 4 is 1, so our answer here is 1x. Since we got that one to equal x, we should try the other way. We should, should try composing it by writing g of f of x. If we also get this to equal x, then we'll be able to say yes, these are inverses. If we get anything besides that, then we'll say no. So it'll be g of f of x is 1 fourth x squared, and the g function is 2 square root x. So we're going to take the red part and plug it in underneath that square root sign for the x. So it will look like 2 square root 1 fourth x squared. So underneath the square root sign, we're going to simplify. When we see all those square roots, we can basically square root the top, square root the bottom, and square root the x squared. So the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is x. Last, we multiply 2 times 1 half, which is 1, and then the x. So that one we also got to equal x. So now we can say, yes, these functions are inverses.